y'all for tuning in to Carolina Food Desert. It's a beautiful day here in South Carolina. It's going to be a quick video update because I'm running out of room on my phone's video storage capacity. I get a lot of questions about soils, whether it be for container gardening or raised beds or in-ground soil amending, soil mixes and things. Uh, I'm convinced that soil is the most important factor in your success as an organic gardener. And if you cultivate the soils and focus on well-connected microbial communities, I think you'll produce a lot of uh, thriving plants that will produce bioavailable, nutrient-dense produce for you. So I'm looking at my compost pile here, and I put everything from uh, leaves that I rake to lawn clippings, food scraps, a lot of fruit peels, um, twigs, uh, even grill scraps, you know, things like burnt charcoal and ash, uh, just anything in here, organic. I uh, even put my dog's poop in here. A lot of people don't do that, but my dog's on a high-quality pescatarian diet, eats nothing but salmon and sweet potatoes and peas and rice, and so I feel like I can put his poop in here and it's not a big deal. If you're feeding your dog some type of, like, GMO corn, then shame on you, and yeah, you shouldn't put it in your compost pile, but otherwise you should be good to go. So I love my compost pile, and it produces the most high-quality, nutrient-dense, bioavailable nutrition in the soil. If I could grow in straight compost that I make, I would, but it, it, I always run out of it. My compost is always my limiting reagent. So when I run out of my homemade compost, I tend to supplement with things that I get at the big box stores. Shame on me. So I have some cow manure here. I also have some compost and manure, which is a lot of pine fines and hen manure. I have mushroom compost. I have a little bit of sand. I have some perlite, and I have this jungle growth, which is a high-quality, all-natural, professional potting mix. I like that because it's affordable, and they say their proceeds go toward helping wildlife, and they seem environmentally friendly, so that's always uh, wonderful. And so I mix these things in fairly equal proportions. Uh, you can adjust that. You know, if you're uh, growing things that are heavy nitrogen feeders, maybe like tomatoes, you might want to focus more on the cow manure. If you're growing things that fix their own nitrogen, you might want to focus more on the... Uh, Mushroom compost, uh, less on the manure. If you uh, need a lightweight soil, you might want to focus more on the uh, potting mix and things like the perlite. It's really up to you. I also have uh, some sand and some cypress mulch here. I tend to side dress and mulch around with cypress mulch. I think that's really good for keeping the moisture in and just a good organic. So yeah, I mix these things in fairly equal proportions. Talked about the cow manure, the compost, hem manure, um, mushroom compost. I also have these... Uh, Organic starters, you know, a lot of these promote beneficial microbial communities, which is going to increase the bioavailability and nutrients in your soil. So this one's got a lot of uh, traditional MPKs from uh, organic sources like feather meal, bone meal, poultry, uh, but it's also got four or five different species of beneficial bacteria. It's got endomycorrhizae, it's got ectomycorrhizae, it's got archaea. Uh, this other organic starter here has got... Uh, tons of just different beneficial bacteria, 96,000 propagules per gram colony forming units, eight different species of beneficial fungi. And uh, so we really want to focus on promoting strong microbial communities in our soil. And that's what's going to provide the most nutrient dense organic produce for us. And I realized recently that high quality nutrient dense produce, it's free of any type of, you know, spraying of pesticides or any you know, chemicals at all. That's something that money can no longer buy. So if you can grow things like that, good for you. Uh, so again, I get a lot of questions about soil mixes, and I do think that soil is the most important thing, most important factor. So whether you're container gardening, raised bed gardening, in-ground gardening, build your soils, promote your microbial communities, and stay away from all the different chemical fertilizers and uh, other things like that and pesticides and all that.